June 12 presidential election was annulled to prevent a coup, says IBB. And NK Abiola's son, Abdul Mumuni, says Babangida remains one of Nigeria's greatest problems. And moving away from that, uh, the Nigerian Senate has denied proposing the creation of 20 new states. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anna Cole. A former military dictator, General Ibrahim Babangida, during a recent interview claimed that there would be or would have been a bloody coup if the June 12, 1993 presidential election, which the late Chief Mashud Kashimao Abiola presumably won the uh, election, but then it was annulled. Now, the son of late MK Abiola, Abdul Mumuni, had responded to this statement saying that IBB was scared of losing power and his legacy to a Yoruba person. He further said that the former military head should be quiet due to the damage he has caused the nation and not try to prefer solutions. Now, speaking on the 2023 elections, he said, the greatest problem we have in this country are the five babas that are on the hilltops whose permission uh, need to be gathered before anyone can be president. Well, joining us to discuss this is Abdul Mumuni Abiola um, himself and uh, Kazim Afegwa, spokesperson of the former head of state, Ibrahim Babangida. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Uh, thank, thank you for having me, Mary. All right. So um, I'm going to start with you, Kazim, um, because you're the spokesperson for um, the former head of state. And a lot of people have had a lot to say in response to that video and that interview that he um, had with um, um, Arise TV. So uh, I'd like to start with the fact that he said that um, his government is a saint compared to that of the present government, which is obviously a democratic government, compared to uh, the fact that that was a military administration. Why do, you, why do you think that IBB had to say this? I mean, first and foremost, the pundits who are uh, speaking on this issue are saying that government was a dictatorship compared to a democracy where we find ourselves in. Is there really a basis for comparison? What, what comparison are you talking about? Because you're, not, you're, you're echoing when you're asking a question. Your principal said that his government was a saint compared to the government under Buhari. And I'm, I'm asking, what is the basis for comparison? One was a, a military-led government and this one's a democracy. Yeah, the interview is self-explanatory. He, he he was just trying to draw a comparison based on realities on ground. That during their time, he sacked a military administrator for misappropriating three hundred and thirteen thousand naira. But at this day's corruption is in the realm of billions and billions of naira. And uh, if, you draw, if you draw that comparison, you see that corruption during his time was more or less like a child's play. So that was why he made that reference. But really, can a democratically elected government jail people like what was, uh, you know, um, happening under your principal's government? I mean, this is a democracy and then we have to follow the process. Uh, again, that was yeah. done under a military administration. Well, when you talk about jailing people, <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure you are aware of what is happening in Nigeria today. I'm sure you know so many Nigerians are, uh, uh, you know, cooling off in prison, just in different jail homes, just because they try to express their. Did views. those people have their day in court or not? You say what? Did those people that you're referring to have their day in court or not? They have what? I can't get you. Now, you're, you're saying that, we, that you know the realities on ground and that there are people whose heels are cooling uh, in jail cells in Nigeria. And I'm asking those people that you think are in jails because of this government or some form of corruption, did they have their day in court or not? Well, you may say, you may say that people are... But I, I, what I'm saying is that people are in jail for different reasons. There are those who are in jail for corruption. There are people who are 
undergoing trial. There are people who even have EFCC cases who were appointed into this government whose cases were not conclusive before they were appointed. So you cannot you cannot say you are fighting corruption on the one hand and on the other hand you are treating corruption with two gloves. Let me come to you, Abdul Mumuni, because you had a lot to say um, concerning what um, the former head of state um, said in terms of the coup uh, that he thought he had averted as a result of annulling the June 12 election. And you had a very interesting set of statements for him, but let's start with the June 12 issue. He, he explained during that interview that if he had not done what he did, then there would have been a bloody coup. But why do you choose to say that he was afraid um, that he would be succeeded by a Yoruba person? I mean, they allowed the election to take place, even though the annulment was for security reasons, according to him. Uh, Mary, first of all, they, yes, they allowed the election to take place, but they never expected Abiola to win. They assumed that the Northerner would win because they have, apparently have the numbers. But what they didn't understand is that when a, when a leader sells a vision to his people, what happens is the vision is what the people believe in. The, the other candidate did not really have anything to say. Matter of fact, in that election, if you notice, there was a, actually a debate. In that debate, my father floored the, um, the, his, running, his opponent hands down. It was seen across Nigeria. People saw what they were going, were, what they were going to gain from Abiola. And when he talks about a coup, a bloodless coup, or a, a violent coup, my father was adamant on not being violent. My father was the one who secured the nation from having blood all over the country. My father, even when he was being led to prison, God knows where they took him to, Gulag or wherever, um, Guagalada or wherever they took him to, he made it clear that he didn't want any of his supporters to be violent. That was why there was no blood and there was no bloodshed, even after the fact that they had, de they had deprived the Nigerian people of their own mandates. My father said, look, I am the leader, I can sacrifice my life, but Nigerians' lives should not be sacrificed on the altar of my uh, position. He was ready to lay his life down, and that's what leadership is about. So when I hear, you know, His Excellency, or if you want to call him the dictator, talk about being a Maradona, I will tell you for a fact that this person that we're looking at lacks the, the fortitude of being a leader. You see, when you have a leader, you don't go around calling your subjects they. You say we, because as a leader, we don't, you don't do it all by yourself. The people will do what you, the vision you sell to them. The people are the ones that will actual, actualize it. So you don't go around saying they, they are this, they are that. When you talk like this, he, I think he believes this maybe the, the, the son of the queen or something because he sounds like Lord Lugard talking about his subjects. We are Nigerian. He's a Nigerian. I, I think he's a Nigerian. But from what I heard and he the way he's Nigerian. talking to Nigerians, I believe he's saying they, they, they. And... Once you say day, then you have you moved yourself from the equation. So maybe he's not part of the country. So that was where I got it. That, that was one of the reasons why I was, uh, that's why I said, you know, he might, I think maybe because of maybe with the age, you know, sometimes after you have been lying to yourself for so long, the lie becomes the truth. Now, the reason there was no bloodshed was because my father was adamant on this. If it was any other African leader, they would have created, the, he had support. He could have told his members to, to make, the, um, the life ungovernable, my father was adamant on not doing that. Matter of fact, he made clear to everybody that, look, uh, they carry me to jail. They carry me to jail. Don't be violent. We, are to, we will get peace, but we don't want peace of the graveyard. My father made it clear that his own, his life was, he was ready to lay down his life for the future of the nation and not for just because he, because my father already had everything. He had everything he needed in life. They had assumed that if they had, even if, if they had even put him in jail, they can go and meet him and say, oh, God, come, take your money back, go to your palace. My father refused. You see, they didn't believe that that was possible. You know, they, they didn't believe that there would be a man like Abiola, who was obviously the richest in Africa, who was ready to lay down his life for the betterment of the Nigerian people. And that is exactly why 20, uh, 28 years later, we're still talking about Abiola. And that is exactly why this June 12th that he annulled will continue to haunt him for the rest of his life. Um, back to you, Mr. Fabua. I know that you want to respond, but this interview, a lot of people have you know, also said that um, 
or asked why um, IBB is now you know, sitting down to talk about the June 12 situation. Is he trying to make things right? Has he realized that he made a lot of mistakes and he's trying to see if he could retrace his steps, even though he no longer is in power? Well, uh, thank you very much. I can understand the sentiments with which and Abdul Mumini MQ Abiola will speak. I can understand these sentiments, wanting to be the son of a president. But in power game, there is uh, often, you know, scenarios that may appear invisible to you, but when they play out, then you begin to see the reality on ground. You see, Abdul Mumini may not know the internal dynamics of what factorize the June 12 struggle. Even the announcement of the election itself, to me, was a coup within a coup. And so, uh, voicing out his sentiments, understandably so, and it's painful that his, uh, his father died in the process, that is painful. But again, I think he is largely ignorant of the factors and the issues that dominate the June 12 discourse. Uh, so to that extent, the IBD was in president. He knew exactly what security reports he got. He knew exactly what information was at his disposal. And so if he says that he was sure that there would be cool within three months, that would be bloody, he must be saying that from the point of view of information that were available to him at that point and not on the basis of sentiment. That's one. Secondly, I think Abdul Mumini need to be need, need to understand that General IBD played a very formidable role in the aspiration of MCO Abiola. He may not also understand that IBD actually was the one who prevailed on Abiola to contest that election. And uh, if he wants to get more information about that, I should wait. I'm writing a book on that, and I will give you instances where that took place. But the senior Abiola's sons understand the dynamics and what went what 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 went on. They won't come on television to be voicing this kind of sentiments because those who are familiar with the internal dynamics of that fire June trust struggle will, will, will know the role that IDB as an individual played, aside from being the head of state at that time. So it I can excuse Abdul Mumini for that. Which, and like I said, the father is painful, but once you are ready to come out to contest the election or to struggle for power, you must be ready to also die for the country. Because in, in, in power game or in power struggle all over the world, we, we want leaders who are ready to sacrifice for the common good of all. Um, uh, uh, Mr. Fegwa, uh, can I come in there? Because you have said a lot of things that, you know, uh, have raised questions in my mind. First things first, you are saying that Abdul Mumuni is too young to understand the inner workings of uh, the administ military administration under General IBB. And you're also now saying that if anyone wants to run for an office or you want to lead the country, especially under a military rule, you should be ready to die. So you're telling me, in other words, that Maybe not your not principle not knew that for, for, it to, for power to hand over to civilians while there was a military administrator uh, or administrator in power, somebody had to be, to, to be killed or power, uh, blood had to be spilled. Is that what you're trying to tell me? No, no, no. I think, I think you, need to be, you need to be the game of power for you to know how power resonates. If you see, if you follow the, the code that uh, power is a crazy aphrodisiac, it makes men blind to their intentions, and it confuses the one, the one who with power. So you, there are there are scenarios. So, but in Nigeria, you should be ready to die because you want power. Uh -huh. Is that what you're telling me? Listen to me. As an individual, I have my own orientation. I have my principles. But like I often say, we want leaders who are ready to sacrifice for the good of the country, not necessarily dying. But if in the strength in the process of the struggle that comes on, well, good and fine. But they, they, they are placed in history. It will forever remain uh, sacrosanct. It will, ever, it will forever remain uh, remarkable. What I'm saying, in essence, is that the June 12th struggle, the June 12th annulment, was a coup within a coup. And don't forget that even after IDB left, of course, uh, Chief M. Kuaviola 
uh, and uh, Liz Abacha got together, you know, and they were trying to form a government. And whether you like it or not, M2 Aguila nominated those persons who participated in uh, the government of uh, 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 um, of uh, Abacha, the likes of uh, Onaguruwa, on, on uh, Ebenezer Babatokwa and all that, they were all nominees of, uh, of MKO. So what I'm saying in essence is that power game has its own additive properties. And it is only when you are involved that you get to understand the dynamics. We are practicing a democracy now, whether you like it or not. There are a lot of unsatisfactory uh, realities. People still want to, you know... Uh, I, will, I, will, I think we will come to the democratic like part of the, this conversation. Just, just, I'll just put a pin there. We, I, I would come back to the issue of democracy um, because I want to, you know, push back on some things. But let me go back to Ab Abdul Mumuni. Would you care to respond? Because he's really saying that you have not, no understanding of the intricacies of power play, especially within this country and under a military administration. And you might be too young to understand the things that happened and all the water under the bridge. He's also said that your elder brother does understand it, and that's why he's a lot more silent. And why are you speaking? First of all, let me say this. Um, you, see, you want to say whatever you want to say. I was in Nigeria in 1993. I was there when my father decided that he wanted to run. I was also there when my mother was shot in the head. Now, what is exactly do I not understand? I want to understand. After 30 years of this democracy, we are in a worse position than we were in when we started. What is he saying? Talking about power makes you drunk or makes you uh, um, um, completely in, 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 inept. Doesn't make any sense. I, I don't understand where he's coming from. Do you like what is happening in Nigeria today, Mr. Kazim? Are you pleased? Are you, do your kids go to school in Nigeria? Do you take, send them to hospitals in Nigeria? What exactly are you on about? What I'm saying to you right now is, fine. What has happened has happened. It's water under the bridge. I'm already 30 years old now. I'm 37 years old. I'm an adult. I have, a, I have, a, I have kids. I am saying that the mission cannot continue to listen to old garbage, especially when we're moving forward. What I, my issue here is very simple. I might not understand the intricacies, but it's very simple. You started a process. Be a man and follow through. You said you, the man convinced my father to run. This was not the first time my father tried to run. He tried to run in 1983. They said um, something funny like um, the ticket is not for sale. You know, the, what these people don't understand is that they thought my father was all about money. It was never, money was the least of my father's ab ambitions. My father was poor when he was born. He understood the factors at hand. And he said, Nigerians will solve Nigerians' problems. What I'll tell you for a fact is they never believed that Bella will win. They said he's from the West, you know, Yoruba. He will never win against the Northerner. My father showed them that it wasn't true. They thought, oh, it's a Muslim Muslim ticket. He will never walk. My father debunked that rumor. Every step of the way, they tried to truncate his, his progress, but he showed them that you people don't even understand the concept of democracy itself. Look, it's, I'm not arguing with this man. The man is old. And the funny thing about it is that this man that we're talking about, when I was born in 1984, if this man is actually his spokesman, he should know this, he came to my father's house in 1984, and it was a big party. Apparently, he's supposed to be my godfather. So for me to be, even be talking like this, I'm just saying to myself that, look, when we have a situation like this, I am not talking for me alone. I'm talking for 211 million Nigerians right now. We cannot continue to be listening to people who... Who, who are just trying to rewrite history just to protect their own image. Look, if this man really thinks he's very popular and people love him, leave your protection in your house, walk down the hilltop and see what happens. It's very simple. He can prove to us that he's, the, he's a man of the people and just walk freely. You know, I am telling you for a fact, see, I am not pleased at what is happening in Nigeria today. I go back to Nigeria in 2007 and everything, all I am is a progressive. I am continuing on my father's footsteps, not because I want to be a billionaire or I want to have a house on the hilltop. No, because I understand that Nigeria belongs to me. I don't have any other country, for God's sake. So where I'm coming from right now is very simple. Mr. Kazim, with all due respect, when your book comes out, I will not buy it, so you have to give it to me for free because my money is not to be... I'm not going to give you my money so that you can you know, continue you know, buying new cars and all this stuff. What I'm suggesting to you is, please tell your principal to please 
leave the nation alone. Come 2023, the youth will decide where we are going to go. But he did have a you lot know? to say. But he did have very interesting things to say, even though a lot of people have kicked against it. Uh, but he did say that Nigeria needs someone who is progressive. And you are saying that you are a progressive. He talked about the kind of leaders that we need in Nigeria today. He obviously lampooned um, Mr. President's government. Um, and, and said several other things. But he also emphasized on the fact that we need to unify as a country as opposed to the different ethnic sentiments that we're experiencing and the um, people who are asking for secession. He was trying to be a, a unifier of sorts. He, he didn't really say he wanted in because I remember, uh, I think sometime in 2012, he did say that he had resigned from active partisan politics. So I don't think he's really interested. He was just... Maybe lending him his voice. He's not really interested in what. This is the same man. You know, he expected that he would leave. He would leave the corridors of power. After a while, the Nigerians would call him back. And Baba Wa, come back and think. You know, it's very funny how these people think. You know, the country itself is a youthful country. We need yes, we do need a youth president. But first of all, where I'm going with this is, we don't need anybody to tell us what to do. You see, leadership and leaders. Don't go around telling their followerships, go left, go right. You know, it's like a military man giving decrees. Who are you decreeing to? Look, first of all, a true leader... Really, we do not want people telling us what to do, really? Why are we not doing these things if we know how to do it? Why are we still running after the same kinds of people, taking monies from them and killing people, snatching ballot boxes? Why, why are we not doing the right things if we know how to do them? And First of all, I'll tell you it's systematic. What has been done to the Nigerian people is systematic. We don't, what, we, what I'm suggesting about leadership is a good leader will give you, will give you the necessary information to make an informed decision. It's very simple. My father said it, don't give me fish, teach me how to fish. The knowledge is key here. We need to understand the knowledge is key. So what I'm proposing is in this time, we have to, in 2021 and we'll come 2023, what, I've been, what I'm working on right now is giving people the necessary knowledge you need to know the issues so that way you are informed. I'm not going to tell my Nigerian people to go and vote left or right or vote for Igbo or Yoruba because it doesn't matter. As long as you're a Nigerian, you should be able to fight or strive for any position you want in the country. But the issue here is I, we should be encouraging education, knowledge. That is how people would move out of this little box. What has happened in Nigeria is, think about it now, since 1999, the education level in Nigeria before 1999 was something that people were proud of. They said that the secondary school education level was the best in the world. Our, our students in Nigeria go, go to other countries and they're excelling. Why is it different in Nigeria? Because it's systematic. They did this on purpose. They wanted to keep people in, in, in sub, subjugated so that way they can easily control them. You see, look, it's not hard now. Look, the very simple, the very mes the message I'm getting at now is leaders don't sit in their, in their lofty um, palaces and then they start dictating to, to the masses. My father was very adamant on this thing. Now, look, what we need to do is address the issue at the source. And by doing that, we need to educate more people. All right. The Nigeria okay. they grew up in is not the same Nigeria we grew up in. And when he talks about corruption, let him not tell me about corruption. Corruption is corruption, no matter when it is. When in his own time, it was one, one dollar to one naira. Now it's one dollar to five hundred naira. So we learn from you. Don't tell me that um, in your own time it was easier or it okay. was better. Okay, let me corruption go. Is corruption. Let me go back to Mr. Fabwa because you were talking about democracy, and mm -hmm. and a lot of Nigerians who have also um, pushed back on your principles interview have said that what does a dictator or someone who was under a military rule have to or know about you know a democracy? Uh, he has not necessarily. Um, participated actively, and I do not say that, you know, I say that loosely, by the way, uh, in, you know, the, the democratic um, dispensation in Nigeria. But I remember um, that um, a, a, couple of a couple of people have asked several questions that have not been answered, and I really wish there was a fly on the wall, uh, you know, in that room, or I was, you know, asking the questions. There are unanswered questions under... Um, former General IBB's government in terms of the deaths of Dele Giwa. Why wasn't it investigated? I mean, I know that you're going to also come up with a very smart answer. 
But if you must point fingers today and try to see if you can give us some words of wisdom like your principal was trying to give us, the question is, why didn't you do these things when you were in power, when you had all the power to change the fortunes of Nigeria? Why wait now? Why wait till 2021 to start spitting those gems? Again, there are also those who say that your government was not necessarily media friendly. So these, there are a lot of issues here. Um, but I want to start with the issue of Delegiwa. Why wasn't that issue followed? Please, please, follow please allow, me, allow me to respond to a few, you know, uh, submissions of uh, Abdul Mumini. You don't just ask And please make sure you answer by, mine too. By not, by not allowing me to follow up. Please, wait. First of all, IDB as a Nigerian and a former military president has the right to own an opinion is protected by the 1999 Constitution as a fundamental human right of freedom to speak on issues. And whether Abdul Mumini lacks it or not, he has a better knowledge, better understanding of the intricate logic of the Nigerian Federation, if there's anything called, called, called the Federation in this country. So my point is, you don't say what has a man got to offer. I did this book to Arise Television. It, eight newspapers carried it front page on Saturday. That means his, 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 his views and opinions are largely sought by people who want to understand his own feeling about happenings in the country. That's one. Second, who are these people and what poll? What poll it, says that it, there are people who want to hear the opinion allow, of the late general to, and how he speak. feels about the state of the nation? Allow me to speak. If you want to be the one speaking, then I'll, I'll keep quiet. No, no, I'm just allow, curious. You invited me to speak. Allow me to speak. I'm, I'm curious. Responding just to help me understand. I'm, a, I'm responding to the points he raised. So the point is, IDB will be 80 next week, Tuesday. So... Uh, is, is telling us that Nigerians, as a Nigerian, he, he has a right to say, this is the kind of person I want to see as a Nigerian vying for presidency. Abdul Mumini should be telling me what is his own contribution to the evolutionary process of leadership in the country. What is he contributing? What is he bringing to the table? You, 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 you talk about, uh, uh, it's not all about June 12th. In that Lagos where you, where you reside, remove Todd Mill from that place and Lagos will be chaotic. Somebody did that with our money, with our resources. But there are people who are not doing that. There are somebody who ran the government for, for eight years and didn't construct one kilometer of road in Lagos State. There are a lot of, there are a lot of achievements that I did uh, put forward when he was, when he was president. So June 12, June 12 is just a scar. But it is not, it will not detect all the gains that, 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 that he recorded. You were talking about the media that was not media friendly. He liberalized the media even as a, even as a military government. Uh, AIT channels all got their licenses as, as private uh, media platforms. So uh, the, 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 the banking sector was liberalized, and all the new big guys you are seeing today, Zenith Bank, uh, Access Bank, all of this, Diamond Bank took off from Dorian IDB. So there are, if you want me to mention so many, I will have mentioned, but time will not permit me. Time will but not permit me, but I want to rephrase one of my questions as just quickly. As a Nigerian, he has the right to own an opinion, and you cannot take away that right. Definitely. It is, it is definitely. In, in, in right that is guaranteed under the Nigerian constitution. Definitely, everybody has a right to expression. But my question again, the issue of Dele Giwa. Um, we know, we all know the story. He was killed by a letter bomb. The government tried to absolve itself. But what stopped the government from investigating and following through to what make sure that now? they what found government? the what person government? who killed him? What government him? did you do investigation? What government? Are you sure you are conversant with the issues of Dele Giwa? Oh, yes, I am. Please, in case you are would you, like to you, also educate you, me on air, please aware, educate me. Are you aware Once that again. there was a trial, there was a trial, there was investigation, there were, there were submissions, there were conclusions? Are you aware that... Uh, but it was the duty there, of the there, government there was, to fish out the killer. Who, who is the killer? What are you was, aware that there was a legal disputation about the issue of Dele Giwa? Well, we're still ask, I'm still asking the same question. Talk? I am aware of all of these things, but where is the killer? There should have been a point at which, with all of the things that happened, with all of the sessions and all of the cases, the investigations, the hearings, 
Why couldn't the government as powerful as that of General Ibrahim Babangida not able to fish out the killer of Daily Giwa? How many, how many, how many killers, as powerful as America is, were they able to, to find out who killed Meriwether Lewis in the Jefferson days? As powerful as it is, are, are, there, no, are there no legions of all reserve murders? So you're making an excuse that a government, government who is today telling us a, how we should run our democratic to system today is unable to fish out a killer of a journalist, one of Nigeria's finest it, journalists. It, it, you're making an excuse. It, 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 this question is too pedestrian, my dear sister. Uh, as, as, as pedestrian as it is, please help no, me listen, understand listen why you me, are brushing off the issue of Nigeria being unable to fish out a killer for a government that wasn't just civilian, it was a military government, so we had all of the powers to do that. And you're comparing it to America. No America is hundreds of years of ahead of us, so of course. Go ahead, let's continue the comparison. As much as you say this is a, a pedestrian question, I would like a pedestrian answer if you don't mind. Uh, well, unfortunately, I think we can't hear. Uh, Mr. Figwa again. So I'll come back to you, Mumuni. I saw you raising your hand. Yeah, like, you know, you see, this is all semantics. Uh, and, uh, and I'm telling you, you know, you, you, know, you can't start, you know, mixing up. With, see, the bottom line is what was done during that time was just as bad. You know what I mean? Let's not call it spade a spade. You know, this was letter bombs. You know, you sit down in your house, you get a mail, like, you're like, wow, like, wow, like, like, you know what I mean? So this, this, these are the kind of things these people were capable of. What, I, what I'm getting at here is we should not be fooled yet again. It's very simple. I made it clear in my statement. You know, when I saw the speech itself, I just looked at somebody who was trying to redeem himself. Wanted to. The first thing you do when you want to redeem yourself is, first of all, apologize. You know, I was wrong. I apologize. You know, this is why I, I think that Nigeria is always so backwards, you know, because the same old story over and over again, and we look for different results. Why do we seem that we, why is it like, it's like, it's like we're cursed. It's like we go back to the same old people looking for answers. And he made a comment about, I think he was making a comment about the Lagos State, former Lagos State governor, Ashwaju Bola Metinubu. If not for Ashwaju Bola Metinubu, we will not even have an opposition party, for God's sake. You know what I mean? That man fought through Najeko. He fought for the um, restitution of democracy in the country and was so lucky that we even have an alternative. The alternative might not be perfect, but it's better than what we had before. So I, for me, I, I, I would go, I, I, I would not even try to even start picking and choosing which one and which. And you talk about um, building Tom Milan Bridge. Yeah, yeah, exactly like he used his personal money. This was our the people's money. The people built it. You just happened to be the one at making, signing the paper, but you were signing on behalf of Nigerians. Don't think that you are, you, you are better. You see, this is another problem with Nigeria. You know, you, you build something that with the public funds, and you say you want to have a commission. But, that's, but, that's, but, but, but the same effect? could be said about Bola Ahmed Tinubu, of course. When you say he fought, um, and, and all the things that you think he, do, uh, he did, the strides and the gains, obviously was taxpayers' money. So, no, 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 I'm not saying it's not with taxpayers' money. What I'm suggesting here is that when you start to say one is better than the other, there's no reason to do that because... Everything is in his own context. So for me, I believe that when Asuaju was, go uh, was, uh, was governor at the time, if you had noticed, I think in the second term, they had stopped giving them local government funds. You know, there were so many things done to try to, to belittle the man and try to suppress his, um, his, um, his progress in the, in the nation. So God knows, you see, the, the, the fight for our democracy is still ongoing. You know, like I said, you know, Asuaju has done his part and it's now left to everybody else to continue as we go. Like for me, he said that uh, maybe I'm not, I don't know, I'm not, be, what am I doing? Well, Since well, quickly, be Nigeria, because we're running out of time, because I want to go back to Mr. Figua to wrap this up. He, he did, you know, ask you a simple question as to what, are, what solutions are you bringing to the table? What kind of leader are you proposing for Nigeria? Just as his principle has also made his case, what is your case? Okay, first of all, when it comes to picking a leader for Nigeria, I don't have any right to tell Nigerians what to do. What I am doing on behalf of the nation is by informing people. So I have like a radio program that I do trying to encourage people to not sell their votes, to, you know, to understand the issues that we are facing today. That's one. Two, what I'm also t telling you is that even today, in the democracy we have today, we have people that we can, I can identify with as true Democrats. 
Okay, first of all, I worked with Arago Shola in Oshun State. That's when we came up with the old meals, the Opoima program. We did the uh, 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 um, Oga, no, meal, Ogao. He did the, um, uh, um, this, um, he, he employed um, youth. You know, he, we're doing things that we could, but if you understand that the, um, we were surprised by the funding we had in the States, but he did his best. Even to today, as the Minister for, um, for Interior, he's working, trying to, um, to, to, to uh, revolutionize the, the passport process and even just the, the ministry itself by um, getting better fire equipment for the fire department, helping with the immigration process to make it easier for people this, to get passports. This sounds, to me, this sounds to me like no. uh, a, 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 this sounds to me like a campaign of sorts for uh, Ralph Aregbe And yeah, there are no, many no, people who no, would no, also no. disagree with you that yes, he didn't do great and, in and office. Right. So you have right unfortunately, to, like I don't think I want you to do this, to carry out this campaign on my show. One more thing. One more thing to say. One more thing, and then you can go to Mr. Febwa because I think he's the, the showcase of this event. You see, I've also gone around the country. I've met people. I've listened to what they, they need. The same thing my father was complaining about is what is happening today. I want to mention one more person that I believe is also done something in his own private, in his own space, and he has done, and I'm, I'm pleased with what he was able to do. In Kogi State, for example, he was, he's a youth. He, he made sure that most of it, all his cabinet members were also youth. So it's a youth revolution. If you go to that state today, you find that that state is bordered by 10 other states. We have We're not hearing about kidnapping. We're not hearing about anything. What I'm suggesting to you is that the future and the way forward for Nigeria is when we forget these old babas and we start to handle these things ourselves. The way I will solve a problem is different from the way my father will have solved the problem. Okay. My father's time okay. is past. It is time for the youth to take over control of the nation. Period. All right. Um, Mr. Fegba, I, I mean, I'm again... I'm, I just asked the questions. Really, is it about the age of a person or is it about the experience or the ideas that you need to run a country and run it a right? I think, I think uh, my brother Abdul Mumini is really like Mr. President who is, you know, detained by the past. When you, when you challenge the APC government, they tell you PDP are the problem of the country. Meanwhile, they are presently occupying the driver's seat in our governance process and are unable to deliver you know, democratic dividends the way they should be. They should be. So while you, keep, while you keep hammering at the past, while you are not looking at the future, you are not creating opportunities that will help us to uh, get credible elections, that will throw up you know, credible leaders to represent us, then we have a problem. And my point is, I, I, I don't have problem with anyone holding any opposition or anger, grievances, all that. But when people speak, it helps our documentation process. It helps researchers, it helps historians to put history in its proper perspective. So as far as I'm concerned, I believe in this democracy, no, 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 no matter the imperfections, the, all the intricacies and what have you, but I also believe that for you to throw up a the new leadership that is, you know, that is uh, democratically elected, we should be able to ensure that our elections are credible. Okay. The e-voting e -voting issue came up, came, came on board. Where I didn't hear Abdulmumini's voice condemning the the, 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 the rejection of e-voting at the national assembly. I didn't see him protest on the streets of Lagos to say that no, this is not this is not proper for a, a contemporary democracy like us in the first century world. So what I'm saying in essence, no matter what you say, IBB has its pluses, he has its losses. Yeah, he made a lot of achievements in this country. He re-engineered, you know, the governance process in this country. And also, he also made some mistakes. He, he's a human being. He okay. cannot be perfect. He cannot play the role of a god. But on the, on, on the general scale, what he did more, I bet the what he did good, better than those ones we consider to be bad. And he, and he also said that not to take a decision at all, will be bad, but then it is better to take a bad decision than not to take a decision at all. So whatever decision I was taken when he was a president, he owned up to the responsibility of it. He said, yes, yeah, hold me accountable. That is how contemporary leadership should behave. All right, in closing... When in, they ask them questions, they tell Mr. Fegwa, we have to go... Mr. Fegwa, we have to go quickly, quickly. 
you are his spokesperson, you're the general's spokesperson. If you were to speak to him after this, um, what would you advise him to do in terms of this, um, especially for his name to be written in gold once again? Shouldn't he be apologizing to Nigerians, just like Abu Abdul Mumuni said? Like you have rightly stated, he had his faults, and those faults are continuously remembered by Nigerians. So shouldn't he be apologizing at least to Nigerians? His name is already written in gold. Is it? It depends on, it depends on what side of the divide we are looking at. Because after, the, after, after an even in this our democracy, our, our courts have been annulling elections. Heaven is done for. Our courts have been knocking off a lot of elections. And don't forget that it, it, uh, there, there, there are two, two sides to a coin. NROC played a role in the annulment because they felt bitter that certain things were not done right. Okay. Nobody's looking at that. They just think about it's all about Nigeria. No. Two parties participated. One voted for A, one voted for B. And if the elections were annulled, the, the, if, you, if, you, if you go to history, you will see the petitions written by NRC to complain about the elections. You will see people, persons who went to court to challenge the fact that even M2 Abdullah wore the insignia of SDP, which is a white horse. We have to go. The drug that he took to, to vote him. So we have to go. I want to thank you. I want to thank you. Mr. Kazim, I'm so sorry. I have to thank you here. Uh, Kazim Afebwa is a spokesperson of former head of state, Ibrahim Badamosi Babangida. Thank you very much for speaking with us. Of course, I want to appreciate uh, Abdul Mumuni Abiola. He is the late MKO Abiola's son. Thank you, gentlemen, for speaking with us. Time is not our friend. Thank you. Well, we will take a quick break, and when we return, we will quickly look at those who are advocating for 20 new states in Nigeria. Do we really need it? Stay with us.